what is the very best tree you can plant to grow your own firewood? I'll give you two seconds to think about it. Got an answer? What do you think it is? And let me know in the comments what you thought it was. And I'm going to show you some interesting numbers here that just really might blow you away. It's, it's probably going to shock you because it shocked me when I first started really researching this. So let's get into it. Okay, here we are. It's out here on another cold January day. And I've got to stoke my wood stove, keep this place warmed up in here. It's cold outside. Now, I cut a lot of wood. I've, I've been cutting firewood for a few years back here. It's the main way that I'm heating this place. Now, I want to manage my land the best I can. That means I need to understand how to grow good firewood. Naturally, the question arises, what kind of trees should you grow? Should you just use wild trees? Should you maybe thin out undesirable trees? What's undesirable trees? Let's talk about it here. Now, the most common tree that everybody wants to grow around here, or the most common tree everybody wants to buy for cut firewood is this one right here, black oak. If you have black oak or um, the hickory that we have around here is also very popular. This is the only wood people want to buy. But I have found out it's not really necessarily the wood that I would grow if I'm cutting down a tree, I wouldn't necessarily plant another black oak. And here's why. I've got a chart here of, maybe I need to move this over a little so you can see better. This is just a list of some of the trees that grow around here and their BTU ratings, how many BTUs per cord of firewood. This is million BTUs. So willow, 18 million BTUs per cord, give or take. Poplar, about 19 million BTUs per cord. The pines are usually between about 19 and 22 million BTUs a cord. Oak, it usually stands at around 24 to 26 million BTUs per cord. Hickory, ooh, the good stuff, right? A good hickory. Your black oaks, more like 27 million BTUs per cord. Your hickories are more like 30 to maybe 29 to 32, about 30 million. BTUs per cord. Down here we have Osage, 45 million BTUs per cord. That's fine and dandy if all you care about is buying one cord of wood and you want to get the most condensed wood you can. According to this, and it's fairly common knowledge among forestry circles, you can't beat Osage for an American grown hardwood as far as the pounds of wood per cord, which correlates into your million BTUs or your heat value per cord. Basically all American hardwoods are going to be between about 8,600 and 8,500 BTUs per pound of dry wood. So when we figure that out, Osage is a heavier wood, it's more dense. It's about 45-ish million BTUs per cord and there's nothing really remotely close to that in terms of just pure heat value for a cord. But how about if I'm trying to get the most heat value, the most firewood value off of my piece of property? That's a whole different equation because now we have to take into account, we have to take into account the speed of growth of the tree. We have to take into account things like regrowth of the tree. Sometimes after we cut a tree down, we actually want it to regrow. I'll talk more about that in a couple minutes here because that's really awesome, I promise you. When we're considering tree spacing, how much space a tree needs, because some of their roots and some of their canopies, they just need extra spacing. When we consider spacing and speed of growth, this chart gets messed up. Let me show you what I mean here. So first off, I'm gonna start at the bottom. 45 million BTUs per cord, right? Well, if we look at how it can be harvested on a very well-managed plot of land, we can look at how many cords per acre can be harvested and then how many million BTUs per acre per year. That's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at how many on average by managing, say, manage 100 acres of these trees. How many million BTUs per acre per year or how many cords per acre per year can I get? So let's look at it here. Osage, with the Osage, 45 million BTUs per cord, we can get a little over a cord a year on a well-managed plot of Osage per acre. It's going to come out to approximately, according to U.S. forestry information here, 52 million BTUs per acre per year is attainable on a well-managed Osage plot. Let's talk about um, 
the hickory. With hickory, hickory, 30 million BTUs per corn-ish, we can get approximately 19 million BTUs per acre. That is because hickory is just a slow-growing tree. That's, that's uh, at best, probably not going to get a full cord of hickory off of a hickory a forest. It just, it's too slow growing. Talk about the oaks. Oaks tend to be faster growing than your hickories. A well-managed oak plot, we can get a little over a cord per year. So we're talking at about 30 million BTUs per acre per year off of a well-managed plot of oak. Let's go up to the pines. Pines have less heat value, 20 million, than oak, 25 million per cord but they grow faster again so we can end up usually getting a little bit more actually a little more growth out of the pines they tend to be this a little better also about 30 million BTUs per acre per year from pine how about uh, willow let's look at willow here and poplar this specifically, I'm talking hybrid poplar, which by the way is a cross between white poplar and black poplar, which are just land race varieties. You take a white poplar and a black poplar, you cross pollinate them, and you get hybrid poplar. Hybrid poplar grows really fast. It's not very dense. How's it going to hold up against Osage? Well, hybrid poplar can grow a up to, according to U.S. forestry numbers, this is what's been achieved, 59 million BTUs per acres per year. That's quite a few cords. How about willow? Willow is another one. We've got 53 million BTUs per acre per year. What does this tell me? Now this, this is from data of about 27 different trees that I've gotten from from various research throughout the US Forestry Services information a lot of its older information but this tells me that willow can give me more heat value per acre more BTUs per acre per year than Osage and Osage was always considered the very best firewood you can get so just consider that for one minute while I change the batteries in my camera I bet you didn't see that coming. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit more here one step further. If you want to manage your forest as best you can, take a look at this. The way you manage a forest for the best, the, the most productive yield of firewood that you can get, it's not new technology. This has been done for thousands of years. It's some of the oldest recorded technology we even have, and it's been endorsed by every major government in the world, including ours, as an the best way to grow the most wood per acre every year. And it's called coppicing. The word is coppice. And that means to chop, basically. To chop or to cut down. And what we're talking about is cutting a tree down to the stump and letting it regrow. Now that's the best way to regrow a forest for a couple different reasons. One, that tree already has roots in the ground. I can take me a decently sized tree and go ahead and cut her down. Let's say that I've got a nice bushy top, weird red tree. Okay, now I go and cut that down. I have a stump left. That stump with certain trees that have a high regrowth rate, that stump is going to start sprouting. I'm going to get another growth coming off here. I'm going to get a growth here. I'm going to get a growth here. I'm going to get several smaller growths out of that tree. And it, it, it'll, those will never get as big as the original tree would have. But each one of those new growths will turn into a nice sizable log. You just give it the time it needs. These faster growing trees, I can whack them down to a stump. And I can with, with, with willow or with poplar, with regular poplar, not even wild poplar. I can cut it to a stump and in four years I've got five 15 to 20 foot logs about that big around, seven to eight inches at the, at the base, growing off of the small, fairly small stump from my poplar tree. If I go with a, pop, with a hybrid poplar it's going to be even faster regrowth 
and it goes so well because it already has all of these roots, live roots attached to this live stump. It doesn't have to grow a root system. It, that's about 10 to 20 years ahead of anything that I could plant in the ground from a, from a little sprout. So when I do this coppice system, I can get two or three times as much growth per year. We get a lot more growth per year because we don't kill out the tree and start new trees. We keep the entire root system in the ground. There's another version of this called pollarding or pollarding. And that is simply, instead of cutting the tree way down low, you cut it off a little higher. The benefit of that really is just that it, it keeps it up high enough that animals aren't going to come along and chew all the young twigs and leaves off of your stump as it's regrowing. That's pollarding. That's the common way, coppicing and pollarding, it's the common way firewood's been grown across the old Europe countries back into the medieval days and in a lot of the old homesteads across America too. It's great for growing more per acre, but it's a little slower to harvest and it's not easy on machinery to bring in big machines and harvest that. But it's really great for your average small, small steader like me. I've got one acre. If I can do 50 million plus, almost 60 million BTUs per acre per year off of this, then I could have enough wood to, to at least supplement our heating big time off of a half acre of hybrid poplar if I manage it well and do a coppiced system where I trim back and let it grow and then every four to six years you trim that back again. So maybe one out of four trees you go ahead and you cut down. Excuse my poor illustrations, but if I come out here and I cut down this tree one year, it's going to start to regrow. The next year I'll cut down this one. The next year this one. The next year this one. This tree now has regrown with its coppicing to almost the same wood volume that it had within about four to six years. I'm not going to run out of wood. I'm not ever going to kill off everything if I do that. It's really an amazing system. So just to sum it up as a reminder, the hickory around here that everybody loves to buy, that can grow me approximately 19 or maybe 20 million BTUs per acre per year off a very well managed plot. Willow, poplar, osage, they can get me 50 to 60 and that's because they can be coppiced or pollarded. They can be cut down to the stump and they will regrow every time. Sometimes the really, really big, giant, mature trees won't, but most of the time, even the big ones with your willow, your poplar, and your osage, they tend to regrow and regrow quite well if you manage them, if you bring in some grazing animals to spread some manure around, or you fertilize your trees a little bit some other way now and then. Make sure they get a little rain. Make sure it's well taken care of land like you would any crop and you, you trim them back as you need to and never over trim anything. If you do that, you're getting three times the yield off of than you would off of hickory. Talk about sustainable. So what did you think about that? I bet you didn't know that. You probably didn't think that the oaks and the, and the iron woods and more oaks and I probably didn't think that those were actually a bad tree as far as how much heat per acre every year you can get from it. I'd like to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments. Well, I've got to go and finish my chores, so I'll catch you later. Bye now.